Hey guys, this is Lion of Judah from the Guild 7 from Thunderhorn server. So glad to be with you on another Legion infested video that is coming up hopefully in uh, August. I, I really would say September because it's really September we're going to be playing Legion unless you want to count the one damn day in August, but whatever. Uh, so I have two people with me to do this video. And uh, first person is my very good friend and guild master is Zara Tool. Zara, say hello to the people of YouTube's. Hello. Awesome. And then I have one of uh, the best healers I know, uh, Shivan, if you want to say hi. Flattery gets you everywhere. Yay. So, okay, this video, are numbers going to be too big in Legion? Um, we've been seeing so many videos, um, you know, about like the artifacts and the world questing and, you know, the pre-launch event and, you know, everyone's getting kind of distracted with, you know, certain things, you know, with those videos. But let's just talk real. Like, what are we going to be seeing on the daily? They just activated the add-ons for this last alpha patch. The number tuning right now still needs to be worked. But right now, as of 110 eye level, or 110 level, like your end, the, the max level, people are doing anywhere between 300 to 400,000 DPS a second. So, I mean, let's just break it down here. Um, my answer is pretty simple. Are numbers too big? No, not at all. I would love to be doing 10 million crits because that's just how I like to see the game be played. But I'm in the very minority of, you know, this whole gameplay status. Like, I, I, I love big numbers because I love to see my character become more and more powerful. And how that is displayed in the game is through numbers. So, Zara, like, seeing these numbers, like, that, those were the kind of numbers we were pulling in Siege. Siege of Orgrimmar. You know, we'd be doing Galakris and stuff like that. And those were the type of numbers we'd be pulling then. Is this something already at the first tier of an expansion? Is that already getting too big? Uh, it could be, but it all depends on like how far they want to take it. Like, Do they want to have this expansion end the way the other one did, so we're around the same numbers? But if you remember in the other uh, expansion, we were nowhere near as high in the beginning of the expansion as we are at the, you know technically the beginning of this one at max level like it's substantially higher like people literally went from doing like 90k dps to doing 1.3 million by the end like you know it didn't go from 90 to 200k it went from 90 to a million so if we're already doing a million that's just like okay so maybe 10 million you know, I'm talking single target. I'm talking like crazy AOE million ads. Uh, eh, who knows? Some people like big numbers. Some people think it's a little ridiculous. I enjoy them to a degree. I think they're fun. But I think after a while, it just gets like, yeah, hey, it's 30 million something, whatever. But can you say the same thing also on small numbers? Like, yay, I hit for 3,000. I mean, yeah. And the same goes for that, depending on what it is, because it's like. You know, when the DPS is like, you know, around, like you say, like, well, 3,000 is kind of a certain number. You know, if you go to four, that's significant, you know, increase usually. But like when you're doing like when you're in that bracket, I think where we are now where people are doing like the uh, well, not now, but like, oh, you could be doing 30 or 40 or 50 K. It kind of gets lost in there. So it's like, you know, the people that are on number one, you kind of like, oh, they're good. But the people that are a little lower, it's like. If you meet the minimum requirement, you're still okay, but it, like in between doesn't really matter. Uh, I think what they should more focus on, instead of just having huge numbers, have a greater increase in the numbers for the expansion. So like if, if you're going to start the expansion, let's just say you're level 1 and the max level is level 10, just for argument's sake, and at 10 with let's say a full set of like a dun you know a dungeon tier type of thing you do 5k dps and then when you get into the raid tier you're doing like 10 into the first raid tier that's good but i think when like the next raid tier comes like that needs to substantially grow to really see that oomph 
You know what I mean? And then when the next one comes out, you increase it again. Now, the problem is when they do that, the other older raids are going to naturally be so nerfed. They're going to be a joke. So every content patch, they're going to have to up all the bosses health or something like that, which makes it harder to do. But uh, I don't know if it's going to be too big. They said they're going to have to do a stunt cr uh, stat crunch again which I think is stupid. If they were going to do it in the first place, they should have brought us all the way back to Vanilla WoW and then went up for there. Because if they're going to do it like this, where we go two, two expansions, number crunch, two expansions, number... It's just going to be like, what are you doing? This, is, this isn't this is fixing anything. It isn't like you're, you're just band-aiding it every expansion or whatever to make things seem normal. And I, it seems stupid to me. You know, either continue going this and just do astronomical numbers where you know say at the end of this expansion everyone's doing 20 million dps how will the next expansion everyone's doing 200 million dps 500 million a billion like after a while the numbers just get like what's the point you know it all you're seeing is you know they're not going to do 11 billion 273 million like the, the after the billion it doesn't matter anymore so you're just going to have an 11 there and all the other numbers are going to be gone, so you might as well be doing 11K at that point. Yeah. So, uh, Shiv, what do you think about these numbers and everything like that? I mean, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, unless I'm just going to say this uh, to my viewers out there. I'm not in the Legion Alpha. Uh, my buddy Zara is not in the Legion Alpha. And Shivan's not in the Legion Alpha. Which is bullshit. It's bullshit. I agree. I, I was only in the past three Alphas and Betas. You know, giving feedback to Blizzard, but apparently for Legion, I'm just haven't been in any. <laughs> I haven't been in any ten years. Yeah, so shit. Play all classes, all specs, no fucking invite. They're afraid of you, Sarah. That's really what I it know. comes down to. Um, I'm one of those people that the number only means something if it means something. So if the mob has five hit points, and you can cast a spell goes for 10 and you kill it in one shot if the mob has 5 million hit points and you can cast a spell that does 10 million hit points and you kill it in one shot one shot is a one shot it doesn't matter the number okay yeah, i'm kind of with you on that a little bit and um. the other part of it is that i just think if it causes problems for mechanics like what we have with you know garage you know where they have to keep resetting him because we do too much damage and he keeps needing more health that that's not good for gameplay well exactly and that's where my next question comes into is the reasoning of siege and why the whole garage reset health thing happened is because of the integer that we that blizzard has coded this game on it's a 32-bit integer okay so the 32-bit integer number is two billion one hundred forty seven million four hundred eighty three thousand six hundred forty seven that is the number so there can't be a boss health with a bigger health number than that specific number that is why garage basically reset so many times so why hasn't blizzard just switched from a 32-bit integer to a 64-bit now you can go onto a 64-bit wow client you know in the game right now but that's not the standard that's not what the mainframe is setting it out as even if you're playing doesn't this, matter yeah it doesn't matter so here's the thing and i and i was talking to shiv earlier about this particular subject no mmo right now not even final fantasy or realm reborn not even uh you know rift or whatever huge mmo that's out right now is at a base 64-bit integer. Why? I'm not too sure. Personally, they don't need to. They well, don't have ridiculous numbers like that. Well, that's true. But here's my thing, too, is a 64-bit operating system is, I think, like people can say it's kind of pointless to have 32-bits just as good. I just feel my personal system is a 64-bit operating system. That's just what I personally run on. And the reason why is because of all the people and all the techie people that I ever spoke to just said 64-bit just runs smoother. It runs better. You can read more RAM. You can read um, um, not more devices, but it's just more you can read the RAM consumption. So after 4 gigs of RAM, 32-bit's not going to recognize anymore. So if you have like 16 gigs 
on a 32 bit operating system, it's not going to read any more than the four. Yeah. So the reasoning why I think Blizzard should be the the time, or this should be the time to switch from a 32 bit integer to a 64 bit integer, is this specific reason of resetting the boss health because now you're limited to the type of encounters and the type of uniqueness you can bring to an encounter because you're stuck at a certain number. Now, before I pass it off to you, Zara, the 64-bit integer number. <laughs> now, Are you gonna do it right? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna okay. try. It's <laughs> nine quintillion two hundred and twenty-three quadrillion three hundred and seventy-two trillion thirty-six billion eight hundred and forty. No, fifty-four million seven hundred and seventy-five thousand eight hundred and seven. That is a fucking number. Holy shit! I like the seven on the end there. I know. <laughs> so, okay, so you have that number being the base now. Now, Zara brought up a really great point earlier. I personally think, and this is what me and Shiv were actually talking about earlier, is if every expansion had a number crunch. Now, listen Listen to me real quick. Listen to me real quick. Zara brought up a point of having exponential power in an expansion. The reason why they can't do that is because it's always been linear power upgrades. It's always been, you know, you, you put on a piece of gear, you technically don't even feel it. You put on a brand new chest, let's say it's a heroic chest from an LFR chest, you're still not going to feel the power upgrade. The reasoning why is because you're experiencing a linear power upgrade. If they were... To let's say what Zara says, like go to Burning Crusade type of DPS numbers to where it's like 7k DPS, you can literally every rate here go exponentially up in gear power, which means you can go from doing 7,000 DPS to 48,000 DPS to doing 400,000 DPS on the last tier. And every piece of gear feels like, wow, I'm doing like a thousand more DPS because I put on a brand new chess piece or I just got my brand new two set. Man, this feels amazing compared in comparison to how we feel now when really the only type of power upgrades we really feel is set bonuses and trinkets. Other than that, you don't feel anything. So passing on to you, Zara, with your idea, how would you feel if Blizzard did switch to a 64-bit integer and every expansion they did a number crunch. So that way you can feel in that current expansion an exponential power upgrade rather than a linear one. I think it would be a pretty good idea. Uh, like, I don't know, you know, most of these games, like I said, like they don't run the 64 bits because they don't need to. They don't have these astronomical numbers where the bosses have 50 billion health times 30 or whatever, you know what but I mean? But they haven't been around for 10 years either, Zara. Exactly. But they, they don't need it a lot of times. And, you know, the thing is, like how I was saying with the exponential power, like it would be kind of hard for them to regulate it because, like you're saying, like you get a chess piece, you want to bump up to all this ridiculous DPS. Well, let's say you're in a full raid group, you know, and everyone's doing great. You're just able to get the boss down. Your DPS is just good enough. The next boss is going to be hard, but you should be able to do it. One person gets an upgrade. All of a sudden, they go from doing 8K to 36K. They can solo the next boss. So there would have to be some kind of, I don't know, algorithm set depending on each person's piece of gear. And when it comes down to that, that's just too much computing, too much figuring it out, too much shit for the game to do just to play. And that's why it'll probably never happen. Hmm. I mean, because right now, like, I was just putting out numbers because I know they were saying anywhere between 300 to 400,000 DPS a second. So you have, just as a little small scenario, if a person in a 10-man raid group is doing 300,000 DPS a second with 10 people doing that much, and that's and that's including healers, that's not a predictable, but I'm just making it easy for number, for number sense. So you have 10 people doing 300k DPS. That's 3 million DPS a second. In, in one second. So in one minute, you're literally, the, the raid is doing 100, 180 million, no, billion. Wait, is it 100 billion? Get <laughs> your calculator out. See what I mean? 
It's just de dealing with these numbers just is take kind the of zeros dumb. off. Just take the zeros off. Okay, no, it's millions. So you go from three hundred thousand DPS a second to three million DPS a second. So in one minute, it's one hundred and eighty million, and that's in one minute. So in a ten million in a ten minute fight, the group is doing one billion eight hundred million damage. So that's right almost near the number of the thirty two bit integer, which is two billion one hundred mm -hmm. blah 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 blah. That's only in the first raid tier. That's if they keep the current numbers the way they are. Like, it always seems like they never allow themselves enough wiggle room. So, to me, if they're not I don't allowing think they themselves... they have enough wiggle room. Well, that, exactly my point. If they were to add a 64-bit integer, I'm not saying to use the 9 quintillion number, but at least it gives you the wiggle room to even maybe stretch it to like 4 billion. You know, because we're reaching the third rate tier and we're doing like a million, DP, uh, a million DPS a second. But then we know when the next expansion comes out, the numbers are going to be reset. If they make it a standard, so that way they can almost develop a type of um, like a, a rationale to where like, well, in the first rate tier of Legion, like if they did the number crunch in the beginning, compared to the first rate tier of the next expansion, they can go off the numbers because their numbers are going to be the same. We're still going to be going from 110 to 120 if they do another 10 increment uh, uh, level jump. But they know, well, they were doing 7K DPS in the first rate tier in Legion. They're going to have to do 7K DPS again at 120. Because if numbers are really irrelevant, all we want is new content and new new abilities, new shinies, yeah. like artifacts, stuff like that. Numbers at the end of the day are all irrelevant. It's like Shiv said. If 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 a, if a mob has five hit points and you have an ability that hits it with ten, it's still a one shot. The numbers don't matter, whether how yeah. small or how big they are. All that matters is the quality of the content and are you having fun. You know, some people like myself have fun looking at numbers, but as long as I know in the, because let's be honest there, in the first raid tier of any expansion, we know we're going to be doing crap numbers. We know we're not like, we're all in blues, you know, by the time we get a couple of epics on, we're like, yeah, you know, we feel pretty good. But in, re in reality, we know we're not going to be doing really crazy numbers in the beginning. So why not? You know, why not have it be an exponential jump, you know? That's understandable. One of the things with going with the higher bit system is, like, well, the way they're doing it now, they have a limiter. Like, it's almost like a limiter on, like, say you got, like, a race car, and you got a limiter that says you can only do 90 miles an hour. You know, and you, got, you go around the track every day, you do 50 laps, you're getting really good, you're hitting the corners great. Well, you can only ever do 90 miles an hour. So, eventually, that's just, like, yeah. you know, that's it, you know? So, what else are you going to do? You're going to have to change something and what it basically does is the way they're working it it's like they have a limit they go oh we can do all this we can create these fights we can do all these mechanics all right we got it all set all right what is our limit at all right we can't we're above our limit so now we got to go back and rework it to our limit so everything's got to change to the limit and that that ruins games or what you can do is just get rid of the astronomical numbers, go back to basic, you know, three digit, four digit, you know, number type things that are, you know, health wise, HP, mana, you know, all that stuff. And that would, you know, you won't have to worry about hitting your limit and having to change the entire game the way it was envisioned to be played because you have a limiter that you can't yeah. go over. Yeah. Shiv, what do you think about all this? Well, when we were talking earlier, we started with the idea that at the beginning of the expansion, we do something like 50K DPS. And at the end of the expansion, we do 500K. And then when the new expansion comes out, we drop back down to 50. And I'm sure that people would freak out a little bit about that in the beginning. But like you said, everyone expects to do bad. In the beginning, no one really expects to do good damage until we're already into the first raid tier. And by then, we're going to be doing more than the 50k. And we're going to be gearing up and stuff like that. And I think that once people realize that, yeah, we're at the end, we get to see the big numbers and stuff like that. And then we move on to the next content and everyone just goes kind of like reset. You know, we start over again. And I think people could get used to that. 
because it's a nerf, but it's really not. We get the big numbers when we want them, which is at the end. So, Well, really, I think it's not even just the fact of the big numbers. We just want to feel the power. Like, it sucks whenever you're literally going in a raid, right? And you're finally trying to get a piece. And you get one, and you put it on, and you're still doing, like, the same numbers. Like, it feels like yeah. you're doing, like, I was doing 55k DPS. I just got a brand new chess piece. Next boss, I just did 55k DPS. Like, how is that? Like, it, it that's well, what you it did like. Before you were doing 55,280. Now you're doing 55,407. Yeah, but exactly. That 400, that 200, after the 55,000, all the numbers after that don't matter. It's only when you get to 56 and yep. 57,000. That's why the astronomicals don't matter. If you're doing 11 million DPS, if you're doing 11 million 800,000, that doesn't matter. When you go do 12 million, that matters. Everything after the the big number, after the little check mark, really doesn't matter unless you're in a raid group where there's three or four of you that your DPSs are just neck and neck all the time, and then you're just trying to see who of your friends you're beaten out by three points just for laughs. But when it comes down to it, after the 50K, none of it matters. So if it's 50K, none of it matters. 500,000 after 500,000, none of it matters. After 5 million, none of it matters. Only 6 million matters. And 7 and 8 and 9. That's why I think it's a little ridiculous when they're doing the ridiculous numbers. Because after the little 50K, it doesn't matter. You don't even think about it, you know? Yeah. No, you're right. So, um, moving on to the very final portion topic and this is kind of like drifting away from the numbers a bit but this is something that really caused to concern me was when i was looking at a video asmongold put out he saw that there was uh the out the world questing rewards that were already out geared by lfr meaning that the outdoor world content that they're putting so much work in is already going to be outdated when LFR hits. Which means there's no point in doing the world quests if LFR is out. So, well, LFR usually takes a couple weeks. Like, normally the raid drops, and then a couple weeks or months, then LFR drops. Now, for the hardcore people that want to get in the raid as soon as possible, that gear will be good for them. Now, the people that don't give a shit, they're just going to wait till LFR, and then they're, oh, look, I outgear you, he. And it's just like, motherfucker. <laughs> LFR shouldn't exist, period. It's done. Why are we having this conversation? You know, it's, you're right. I mean, but here's my thing. The first month, like, and we've talked about this before in my earlier videos last year, Blizzard is literally going to give us all the world quest stuff. And then once they're done, that's it. We're on a seventh month hiatus until 7.1. So basically all of the stuff like, like for us that are going to be playing the game pretty much every day, there isn't a reason to do the outdoor content anymore. You can do it for funsies, but as Yay, far as for her, alt leveling, yeah, that exactly. was so much fucking fun the it's, last five times around. It's going to be the same thing. Like, Blizzard, come on, guys. Like, did you not learn anything from Warlords? Did you? I mean, all I'm saying is, like, if you want to have LFR still in the game, have it give like, like the same thing you would get in a heroic dungeon. So that way, if people want to see what the raid looks like and they just don't know what it's going to look like, they can still get rewards that are just as good as heroics. I wouldn't mind that. But as soon as you start putting out gear that's better than the outdoor content the people every day are going to be playing, that's like a kick in the balls, man. Like, you're not giving us adequate and relevant um, content. After LFR drops, it makes it's people irrelevant. Think it makes people think it's a, it was all a waste of time. Thank you. I just well, wasted my fucking time. Here's a question. If it's going to be 
better, if LFR is going to be better than the outdoor content, where is the dungeon gear going to, you know, land in on all of that? Is the LFR gear going to be better than the heroic five man gear? Um, I that was a thing because like I'm not in the Legion Alpha, so I was only looking apart that one because he was he was on Asmongold was on his um like on the the dungeon journal and he was looking at the lfr stuff i don't know what the five man dungeon's going to drop item level wise i don't know what the mythic item level dungeon stuff is. but here's my thing the outdoor content like i wanted that stuff to be something like interesting and something like man it's rewarding you know, you get rewarded. But if it's the same reward as the fucking Apexes dailies, fuck all that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You remember I... the stupid bullshit treasure shit that we picked up that was like man item level? Oh, God. That's what it's going to be. Here's the thing. If, if they're doing LFR again, the LFR item level should be the exact same as you get in the dungeons. End of story. You haven't accomplished anything. You're a fucking failure at life because all you can do is LFR. You should not get a reward. Yeah, to me, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean to anyone who does LFR, but to be honest with you, I've never, ever liked the system. I think it's nothing. it's been nothing but toxic behavior and the whole, you know, people petitioning to have an authentic uh, Blizzard-sanctioned vanilla WoW server, you know, with the removal of LFR, with the removal of Group Finder, with the removal of uh, LFG, it's because they want more of a community and LFR does not spur community. It spurs just toxic behavior. If someone legitimately wanted to learn how a boss works, you know, Blizzard would tell you go to LFR, but anyone playing the game would never tell you that they would never tell you to go in LFR and experience that boss and ask people, what's this mechanic? What do I do here? Like, because all you're going to get is toxic behavior. All you're going to get is trolls. All you're going to get is people basically like, "What? you're such a fail, like blah, 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 blah. And they're in the same LFR you are. So it's like, how can you call another person a fail when you're basically there with them? Um, I don't know. It's just all it's doing is just creating this type of toxicity that like we don't need. And I don't want to go through there because I, I, personally, I don't need to do LFR. I have a guild. I have people that I know I could raid in a solid group with. And I believe if you really want to try to do uh, raiding for the first time, then really it's all about being open as a person and learning and trying to find a group that maybe isn't doing anything hardcore, but see about getting into a casual raiding That's what starter guilds are for. Those little guilds that are trying to get together and all they want to do is get one or two bosses down, but they ain't hardcore. And then when you get moved past that, you can move on to a better guild, but you keep those friends. You know, without being a douche and just being, no, you guys suck later. I got what I needed and I'm out. But, you know, it's just, it's one of those fucking things, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Shiv, what do you think about all the, you know, world questing being already outdone by LFR? Well, I think it's a little bit odd considering that our artifact weapons are supposedly going to be linked to these quests that are out there in the world. And if maybe that's going to be our main reward for going out and doing those is, you know, that kind of stuff. But the one thing I did want to say about LFR is I use LFR for understanding how the boss room looks. I can't do it from a video. I have to like be standing in the room to see. So when I go into LFR, that's what I'm looking for is how much room is there? Where's the boss standing? Where's all these abilities going to come from? I'm not trying to learn the boss, but it gives me a minute to be in the room and figure out how I can move around in the room myself. That's what I use it for. Yeah, I mean, there are tools to use LFR in a proper setting, you know what I mean? And, I, I mean, a lot of people don't want it. Zara doesn't want it. I personally don't mind could it. could live without it. Yeah, I mean, I, we could live without it, but it's the rewards. It's like you feel, people that do LFR almost feel the sense of accomplishment. And to me... It's more the sense that you should be getting is learning, but you're not and you're rewarded probably higher than heroic dungeons. So clearly, like you're better than people that are doing the five man dungeons, but it's not the case because to do LFR is pretty, it's a joke. It's literally a joke. So I can literally get on my pal and queue for LFR and spam Holy Radiance the entire time without moving and nothing (laughs) bad will happen. Yeah. At all. 
It's, uh, I know. I used to read no bullshit. Not in this expansion, but when, uh, in fucking, uh. Cataclysm? Cataclysm. Yes. I used to read books while in LFR. Like, no bullshit. Like, I'd queue for LFR, it would pop, and I'd grab one of my fucking spy novel books off the fucking shelf and read it and just keep hitting four. Yeah. And, like, that would be it. And glance up in case I need to, like, oh, did the raid kill the boss and leave me? And, like, okay, I'll run to the next room with you guys. And then start spamming four again. And I'd be top fucking heels. And everyone would win fucking, like, it, it was completely pointless. Yeah, it's... It's at a bad spot. I'm. I mean, here's my thing. Like if Blizzard, you give me a, a an alpha pass. You give Zara an alpha pass. Maybe even Shiv an alpha pass. Then we could probably test these things, and I'll make a video to where I completely disregard all my previous statements, and you know we'll go from there. But at the same time, like there hasn't really been, and I think the the item levels for these things haven't been finalized. It's still alpha. Stuff can still clearly change. But all I'm saying is, Blizzard, you really need to learn from Warlords. If the number subscription didn't tell you anything, let me tell you. Your outdoor content sucked. The way you provided content sucked. This was the worst expansion you've ever produced. Ever. With almost zero content other than the introductory stuff and questing it was probably by far the best questing experience i've ever had in any expansion bar none other than that it failed on every single front i mean you, we literally waited seven months to go to 6.1 just to get a selfie cam and the open of black rock foundry just to wait another seven months to get to non-jungle and maybe not half flying because you weren't going to do that. But then you realize then how stupid that was. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the end of this video, really. Unless you guys have anything else that you wanted to add on top of what I'm kind of ranting. Oh, about. I got shit to add. <laughs> Go for it. I don't know if, like, they stopped doing their subscription numbers or whatever. Oh, they I want I want to know what it's at because I've been playing for 10 years and I log on maybe once every two weeks. I look at my garrison table and I have an add-on that literally tells me to click and finish all. And I go, nah, fuck it. And I log off. And I, I literally leave like 5,000 gold sitting there. And I just don't care. So if I'm not playing, holy shit, their numbers have to be down. Hey, Zarek, hold on. Can like, you, can oh, you, my God. Can you tell the viewers how often you do play this game? Like, when it was good. Ooh, let's see. Seven days a week. It was a point where I wasn't working. That I was probably averaging twelve hours a day there during hey, rap. I'm in the middle of a video seven right days now. a week. I'll call you back in like five minutes. Four or five hours a day, average. Omar, ten years straight. So I just wanted uh, people to know uh, your, you know, because like they're gonna be like, oh well, you know, how long has he been playing this game? This guy's been playing since vanilla, my guild leader. And he is one to play every day. Like, he's just like me. Like, we get home from work, we get on, we play, you know, we do what we do. But Warlords literally, I think for the first time ever, our guild has literally just stopped. And we were doing yeah. Siege. We were doing, like, even the stuff in Mist when Siege was getting freaking ridiculously like crazy like because we read every week we read it no matter every what week, no matter what and and legion we got this was my first time on my hunter getting best in slot heroic gear like full best in slot and i can have nothing better unless it was like warforged and i just don't have no angst to play this game like i i have none and that's because in siege my hunter was on the verge of being best in slot but it was pretty much the same thing like i was just Best, I, I consider myself best in slot in Siege, but this was the first true best in slot, like every piece that is the best it could possibly be. So, yeah, I, um, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty shitty. Like, I actually logged on, like, a couple days ago, and, like, I just went to town, and our server isn't very big, considering some of them, and I'm just like, it is so fucking dead. Like, it's 9 o'clock at night, and it's on a Thursday, 
and there's fucking no one around. Like, and you can say, oh, well, they're raiding. No, they're not raiding. They're not on. Yeah. They're not on. They're on Battle.net. They're playing Heroes of the Storm, Hearthstone, Diablo, like, you know, know, Starcraft. It's just like, what the fuck? And the game feels fucking abandoned. Like, I almost feel like if an error came up, like, in an hour and the servers went down or, like, something stupid happened where, like, a city just disappeared off the fucking map, it'd just be gone. And it wouldn't get fixed because Blizzard is gone. They left. They they <laughs> left. They fucking left. Like they literally left and left the light on and were like, "Ah, eh, they'll be good. The light's on." Yeah. <laughs> Shiv, you have anything else to add? Well, I was thinking about something about the numbers while you guys were talking. Oh, um, the difference between the the little numbers and the big numbers is that when you have big numbers. Like you have 10 million and then you get upgrades and you do 12 million or 15 million. That's really not a lot of difference. Back in Burning Crusade, when you had someone who was doing a thousand DPS and then the next person was doing a thousand five hundred or two thousand, that's a big difference that, between yeah, one thousand and two thousand. So I guess what I'm saying is that. The lower the numbers are, the more the numbers mean. And the, like I said, the difference between 10 and 15 million is not real big. So when you start getting these huge astronomical numbers, okay, so one person does 100 million, one person does 110 million, whoop de doo You know, that's why we don't feel any more powerful when we're putting this gear on because it's really just tacking that little bit on the end. If we had the ability to, like we were talking about, scaling through an expansion, we would feel that. We would put on a piece of gear and feel that we jump 10, 20k DPS. And it would really matter because then the next time we go to the next raid tier and we put on raid gear, we jump 100 or 200. And then we finally get to the big number at the end of the expansion. So that's kind of what I was thinking was about how back in the day all the numbers mattered, but now the numbers don't matter so much. Yeah, yeah, it's just sort of at that point already. The one other thing with the big numbers too is when these numbers are so astronomically like large, it gives theory crafters a fucking hard time to really go in and crunch shit down to figure out best this, best that. Bass spell because it's like oh it's doing thirty eight million three hundred and what seven so this one's doing three hundred and fourteen I think I need to test this seventy five hundred times to see if it works right and it's consistent that it's ridiculous but when you're doing five thousand DPS and these theory crafters are going back and forth between spells between gears between different gems and they're noticing that little two three hundred increase. It's so much easier for them, and I, I I know personally that a lot of theory crafters just fucking stopped. Like, I actually saw a thing, I think it was on Icy Veins, that they're looking for theory crafters and guide writers, because they just fucking quit. They're just like, ah, I don't want to do it anymore. It's just, it's, it's kind of like the hype is just gone. Like, it's... Legion needs to be not just good and not just better than warlords it needs to be great we need to feel like we're playing like lich king you know what I mean? we need to feel like we're playing um you know burning crusade like it, it i don't want to feel like i'm playing just another expansion i want to feel like i'm playing like the same kind of i mean maybe not nostalgia buttons but the same type of like you know a uh, degree of content and quality of content, you know, I mean, golly, I mean, this whole two patch in one expansion does not cut it. I mean, I don't know what kind of process they have to make their expansions, but whatever that process is needs to change because for 10 years, it's never worked. Every time we have to wait over a year and then Blizzard says, well, we're not going to do a third rate here. So that way we can uh, produce this next expansion which was legion sooner 
which come to find out we're still waiting over a year. Actually, we're still waiting 14 months for uh, the next expansion. So Blizzard, whatever process you have, and I don't, I, I'm just not going to care anymore. I'm not going to have any optimism for you anymore when you're telling us at BlizzCon, oh, we already under, we already started with the next expansion. We're already working on the expansion after Legion. Because it, it's not going to matter. Because I can guarantee you it's still going to come out 14 months after Legion. You know, same thing. It's not, it's not going to change because your track record's never changed. It, your track record has literally never changed. If anything, it's gotten worse than getting better. So... I mean, I don't know what you're doing with 300 developers when I think in uh, Wrath of the Lich King and Burning Crusade, you had less than 100 developers making more content than what you're doing with 300 developers. So I don't know if you're just not training people or if you're getting just, you know, stuck at golf, you know, on the 18th hole and just didn't want to go back and work. Or, I mean, I don't know. I mean, y'all are a multi You're just busy doing other shit. They Like they, you know... They say, oh, we got 300 developers. But you know what? They're probably not all for WoW. It's for Blizzard. So they're doing Overwatch. They're doing Diablo, Hearthstone. So as far as we know, each fucking crew got 40 people to do the whole fucking game, you know? It's possible. Yeah, we were just... This was another to topic that that um, we were just talking about was that it seems to me that, you know, Warcraft used to be the flagship of Blizzard. Yes, StarCraft was around, but World of Warcraft was what Blizzard was known for. And, you know, now they have all this stuff with Overwatch, and they have stuff with Hearthstone. They have Heroes of the Storm because they're trying to compete with League. And they have all these other things that they're devoting time and stuff towards. And it just seems like they're not focusing on Warcraft because they have too many pots. So, yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, thanks guys so much for uh, helping me with this video. If uh, you liked our discussion, I didn't want this video to seem all dark and pissed off. And I mean, come on guys. Like, I mean, I, I really want Legion to be great. I know Zara wants it to be great. I know Shiv wants it to be great. It's just, I don't want to have a great experience like Warlords was in the beginning. Uh, not in the sense of like the first day and all that trouble that people had to log into the game and the, that that was a nightmare and I hope that does not happen for Legion. But I'm talking about like the questing experience. I'm talking about once we reach Endgame, like once we reach Endgame and Warlords, you really figured out, wow, there is literally nothing to do. I just don't want that to happen. I want them to be prepared and I want them to actually come out with content that's going to last several months rather than only lasting a month and then us waiting six for the next content patch, which hopefully may have some content in it and not just selfie cam part two. So again, your, your feelers are, are hurt because you don't have any reason to play this game that you love with the people that you want to play it with. And so it's okay for you to feel this mm -hmm. passion because that's what it's all about. At least it is for us. I can speak for all three of us. That's why we play. We play for the other people. We play for having fun. And if we're not having fun in the game and we can't go do things and have fun with people, then it's like, eh, what are we doing here? So, mm -hmm. and it's okay. It's o And I think you were telling, telling me about Asmogold's video that everyone needs to, like, chill out. Well, yes and no. People are allowed to have feelings. We're invested. My, uh... My 11-year anniversary is today for World of Warcraft. So we've My been in 10 this. will be on 616. So we've been in here a long time playing a game, playing characters, being with people. And you can't do that for all the years we've done this and not be attached. And that's the only reason we care. And it's the only reason we do videos like this is because we know other people probably feel the same way as us and they feel uncertain. So it's okay. It's not a down video. It's just, we're just venting. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. So thank you guys. If you like this video, please. One more thing. <laughs> I think everyone who fucking bought uh, Warlords of Draenor should fucking get Legion sent to their fucking house for free. Oh. As a, I'm fucking sorry we fucked up. <laughs> I would personally love that, and I will give Blizzard my address if they do do that. But like this video if you like it. Um, comment on it, please. I would love to know. One question I would love to know is, if the WoW token didn't exist, would you pay for World of Warcraft? I'll leave that question off to you guys. 
Thank you again. My name is Lion Jr. from the Guild 7 from Thunderhorn server, and I will see you guys later.